when you're in constantly in motion, you're constantly planting the seeds. And then they some will grow, a lot won't. So I think that constant motion, um, like I, you know, I have some meetings set up, you know, within the week that I don't necessarily think they're going to be like maybe extremely beneficial, but it's, it's just about keeping that movement going. Cause if there's not much going on, if you see little opportunities, take them, see what happens and just keep it moving or come up with your own thing to move on to the next thing. And I would just say, Keep that motor running. Don't kind of do something and then just kind of wait. Yeah. Just kind of constantly move. Welcome back to Step Into the Sandbox. On today's episode, we have Kiki Valdez, a Cuban American painter, homegrown right here in Miami. Kiki's talents extend beyond art into entrepreneurship. He actually co-founded a brand named Abuela Mami Coffee in 2015, which began as a Cuban American subscription box and has evolved and grown over time. We talk a little bit about Kiki's intersection of art and business, as well as the lessons he's learned along the way. So I hope you enjoy our conversations with Kiki. Kiki, thank you for coming over and, and, and having this, you know, talk this it's been a while since we've actually had one of these, but yeah, it's been you know, a while. You know, we definitely wanted to do this in the past, but I, you know, I'm glad that we finally were able to make it happen. Yeah, it's good to see you. Um, to bring to bring this like to get it started, we usually have some icebreaker questions, um, and and one of the, my favorite ones that I usually ask is, I don't know if you currently drive a car. Or some people we've asked they don't drive a car, but usually we like asking what what's in your trunk. You know, if you were to go to your trunk right now and pull out three things, what were like, what are some of those things that we? Uh... I think I have cinder blocks because I have a pickup truck. So <laughs> I always throw out stuff, you know what I mean? Like like the yard just accumulates garbage. So I have like cinder blocks and yeah. junk and sometimes like paint or whatever. But I have a cover. So it's like it hides it. <laughs> so I, I can I tend to get a little bit more lazy because no one will see it yeah. until I until I, you know, get rid of it completely. So Some of the stuff back there. You're actually putting your truck to use. Not oh like yeah, absolutely. I think that's too many the people. Point. Too yeah, many people. They just have trucks that look too pretty, and they don't really. No, yeah. no. I, I've I've I put my I put my truck to good use. Definitely. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, another question that has come up more recently is you know the world that we live in with social media and technology. Uh, sadly, one of the first things we do in the morning is pick up our phone, whether it's yeah. you know the first thing or within the first you know handful of minutes. So. If, in your behavior, what is the first couple of apps that you open whenever you reach for your phone in the morning? Um, I usually check my email, usually Instagram. That's about it. Uh, I don't really – what else do I check? And then I check like the price of like crypto and all that. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah. I think it always fluctuates too. It's not like there might be periods of time where like if you're just invested in something, you might open up an investment app yeah. or if like you posted something yesterday and you might like, you might see if there's engagement or you want to see if anyone responded. Yeah. So. I, I check all that stuff. Yeah. I, you know, it's a bad habit. So that's the first thing you do when you wake up. So I try not to do it, but I, I can't. Yeah, I mean, the dependency on it has become, you know, pretty high. It's, it's kind of hard. You have to, like, set those boundaries. But I think it's second nature to people at this point. I think that over time we'll have, like, a... <laughs> I've also had the bad habit lately of I wake up. I just remembered this right now. I'll I'll turn on my phone, whatever, and I'll go to YouTube and, I'll, like, I'll watch, like, a news story or something going on. And I literally, like, fall back asleep with, like, the video playing <laughs> and then like i wake up again and it's like oh this <laughs> four new stories later or whatever and i'm like well what's going on yeah that's usually me at the end of the night watching netflix or like damn yeah i wasn't on episode five like <laughs> yeah it seems to be a common occurrence with people yeah and then i guess the last one we'll have is if you were to walk into a cuban bakery what's your go-to item that you're going to order oh cuban bakery uh a guava patelito and croquetas. Yeah. That's probably like the main thing. Yeah, um, yeah those are like probably the, the main ones. That would probably be my choice too. So yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So now that we kind of got into it, I, I think it's it serves people well to to introduce yourself. Yeah. If, for people that don't know you already, so that they can kind of get a, a background on you. Uh, 
my name is Kiki Valdez, uh, Miami Miami boy, born and raised here. Uh, I paint. I'm an artist. I've been painting for a long time, uh, and I've dabbled in things. You know, whether it's like magazine publishing, like zine publishing, or starting websites and things like that. Uh, but uh, within the last six years, uh, we've been doing a, a Cuban subscription box called Abuela Mami. And from that, we started a coffee company with the same name. And uh, yeah, it's been kind of crazy how you you do something creative and it kind of opens new doors that you didn't really think would open. And uh, But yeah, I would just say I've always been a person that kind of is always on to the next thing and uh, for, you know, whatever I'm at in life. And I feel like that's just always who I've been in a way. I don't want to like toot my own horn or anything, but I definitely feel like I've been a pioneer in certain things, uh, at least down here uh, in certain things that we've come up with and, and things like that. Uh, but yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's really interesting to see like the evolution creatively because I think that, there's um, ideas that people have about trajectories in certain career paths. Like, yeah. well, I'm in art, so I'm always going to do that. And, you know, maybe the trajectory is have a gallery or maybe the trajectory right. is, I don't know, get published or, you know, there's different avenues. But you've chosen an entrepreneurial one that's, you know, subscription box, a product, and, and it's something that not many artists really go after. So it's really interesting. It's kind of new in the scene. I would say it's new in the sense of like – like we were talking earlier uh, off camera uh, that artists usually like get into merch or things of that nature, skateboards where uh, we kind of dived into coffee and like, there's no, there's no like proof that I'm even involved in it as far as art- artistically, you know, cause my work is very different than the branding for the coffee. But uh, so I would say it's different in that aspect, but I feel like, it blurs the line between like art and, you know, a, like a business and they could, they could both be intertwined in a way and they don't have to be frowned upon all the time. Right. Um, I think in the art world, there's a lot of uh, what's expected of you sometimes. And I, I don't think that is necessarily always there, but I think artists always kind of feel that pressure of like, what's expected of me of, of only doing this one thing. And I have the mentality where, you have to do what works for you and there's going to be people that don't really like what you're doing and you're always going to find people that do. So, you know, you wake up by yourself, you know, <laughs> you know, th- those people aren't going to like pay your bills. So, or, you know, be there when it's like times are really bad or so it's kind of like you have to make your decisions of how you want to express yourself and the things you want to share. And, and something like coffee is, is our culture. It's, it's, you know, an art is culture. You know, like food is culture, art is culture. So I feel like, yeah, I mean, that's, I can't find anything more uh, perfect uh, to be a part of. So. That's really cool. Um, I don't know if I went off there. but No, no, that's perfect. That's literally what, you know, we want to get into and, and better understand. So specifically about your craft, there's always the origin story. You know, what was those early moments in your childhood or later on in your teenage years that you realized that, you know, you wanted to pursue a career in art, specifically painting. I've always, like any other, any kid, I was always interested in, you know, drawing and stuff and crayons and um, grabbing, um, you know, kid books and, you know, finding the flap where there isn't any storytelling, just that first flap when you open a book and I would find whatever was empty and that's what I would draw on. And it was just, I just always had an interest in it. And then I always had an interest in it. And then when I started, you know, elementary school, I noticed that, you know, I drew better than a lot of the other kids. And then I got into the art club and all those things. And, you know, then it was just like your, your parents see that that's what you love doing. And then it's just more of the encouragement. My mom was very encouraging. My dad was very standoffish, but my dad was supportive where he'd just be like, okay, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You know, my dad was very, you know, just do what you want. So, uh, so very early on, I knew it's what I wanted to do to what capacity. I didn't know you know, you're a little kid, but I always knew I wanted to do art and I wanted to create something. And, 
you know, uh, when I was a little kid, I thought it was cartoons. When I was a little older, I thought it was comic books. And then, you know, that has storytelling and structure. I didn't want so much structure. So, you know, I got into just more abstract painting and just kind of expressing whatever was, you know, uh, on my mind at that moment. And that's just kind of how it started, you know. Get you. Um, and those influences you just mentioned, you know, the cartoons and the comics. Uh, yeah. So that I'm, I'm assuming that those were some of like your muses at that point. You were, you were painting and you would, you know, find a way to integrate it into your work or you would try and like sketch it. Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, yeah, I, I loved it. I mean, I remember sometimes like telling my mom I didn't want to go to school. I didn't feel good. And I would just stay home. And like I had like this, uh, this uh illustrator's desk you know there's one that slant i don't know what they're called but yeah, yeah and i would you know walk over in the morning with like juice and i would pretend like i was in an office in new york like working for some comic book company so you know i, I definitely visualize it and try to make situations early on little imaginative things happening where it was like a reality and i think it helped in kind of forming that in uh, uh, going in that direction of just wanting to do art and uh so i don't know if i'm going on I don't no know. no no that that's, that's yeah that's exactly it when it comes to you know influences it's integral to any artist and i think that that's important to like point out you know what were some of those moments and what were some of those yeah it's just uh just just wanting to be a part of it somehow and just you just kind of carve your own way you know like you, you'll get some blockades, like some some areas will block where you can't go, and then you just find a different way, and it just. So, and I remember I would start like collaborate with like kids in school, like you know one kid would do like the penciling, and then I would do the inking, and we just kind of would collaborate, uh, which is very different from how I work now. But uh, all those things kind of uh, added on to the to the to the history of 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 my education and the things you know I did later have done later yeah um when it comes to the different paths you've had to get to where you are you mentioned that you have experience in uh, creating zines was it a physical zine or was it digital zine yeah it was a physical one it was uh it was called open zine and uh, we published it we started publishing it me and my brother my, me and my brother have always collaborated so uh, when I was in middle school, uh, we started publishing it. My brother was in high school at the time or, yeah, like high school. And it started as like a photocopy thing. And then little by little, we got into newsprint and we started selling ads to like record labels. And the, it had it had a lot of music in it. But then we would try to incorporate graffiti and, and things like that. And, and then I would do like little illustrations for it. So uh, it was a lot of work. So it was like I had my school work because i was already like in art school and all that and then i had the zine and by the time i started college i think we put out i don't know over 10 issues probably like 11 12 issues 13 issues the last issue we did was right around 9 11 and at that time we were already going to try to find distribution but it was right around 9 11 so it kind of everything kind of but uh that issue was full color and yeah and Obviously, it's different from what you're doing now, but I feel I always find it interesting when there's another project or another part of your career that you still learn from and apply to later on. What are some of those things that you learn from running that zine and from publishing that um, that you still feel are relevant for you today? Um, I guess maybe deadlines or just like, uh, I don't like this term, but like worth ethic, you know, just like you have a lot more on your plate and you could do it where, you know, when we were doing the zine publishing, I was, you know, painting and like trying to finish assignments for school. And, you know, the high school I went to was New World. So it was like the painting program was like pretty vigorous. Like they would make you do more stuff than, you know, my first year of college at art school. So being able to balance both and like kind of switch off from publishing and writing articles or whatever to drawing for the articles and then doing paintings. I think bouncing back and forth has helped me out later in life with like other things, whether it's like getting our coffee into supermarkets and shipping it or whatever. Um, it's kind of 
added on to, to, to that and being able to still make my work and still, you know, make my work and paint and sell and whatever and whatever, the, wherever the paintings end up. So, and you had mentioned your, your education at New World and, and then art school afterwards. Um, how much of what you learned in those institutions do you feel like, let's add a percentage to it, do you feel like you've applied moving forward or how much of it was self-taught? Uh, I would definitely feel like my high school was definitely like uh, gave me, I guess, a newfound confidence because, you know, we were given a lot of materials to paint with that I didn't have access to prior. So it gave me a lot of confidence to just be creative in a way that I never really experienced. So it gave me that sense of confidence in that, you know, in that area. And then, um, uh, I guess just tapping into create parts of my creativity that I didn't know were there. Uh, and then, uh, uh, college was great for, the connections. I met. I met a lot of people in school. Um, I went to school in in Baltimore. I met a lot of people there, so that was good. I mean, um, yeah, you learn a lot, but I think kind of the connections you have after the fact, I think, are very vital. It's art to weird in that way. It's sometimes it's like, yeah, it's what you're making, but it's also you know the people you know and yeah. things like that, and um, you know, instead of fighting it, it's just a part of it. So. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely helped over the years. Um, but I've met a lot of people that have no, nothing to do with anything with school or anything that um, have contributed to the things I've done that like you think you need to go here. You think you need to talk to this person. You think you need to do this. And, and uh, the things that work out are the least the least expected. Yeah. You know, and in terms of your process and, and how you approach a piece, let's say you're inspired to create a new piece. This has obviously changed over time for you, but you know, are there any kind of rituals that you've set forth for yourself before even approaching that painting? Or is it always different? I remember when I was a, a younger, like when I, I want to say maybe 15 years ago, I just bang out a bunch of paintings at once. And I felt like they're all kind of, none of them are resolved. So I'm working on all of them and they kind of all develop slowly. And then like when I'm done, it's like five, six paintings all kind of done at the same time where now I only work on one painting at a time. So I'll work on this one till I resolve it. And then I go on to the next. I, I don't, I don't do multiples at, at a time anymore. Um, so I kind of just try to resolve a painting and then I'll move on to the next. And then another thing I, I would say for a very long time, I would paint, um, a lot of the imagery are people, kind of abstract people in a way, or uh, it's kind of hard to explain. But um, every painting would kind of look different. I mean, it looks the same because I'm the same artist, but they would all be different. Yeah. Where um, now I'm, I've been painting a lot of um, mocha pots, a cafetera. I use that as my prime, like that's like my thing that I start with. And, and then I, the painting will go anywhere. And that's something I, I do now that I never did. So I, I, I'm painting uh, re, uh, in repetition. I keep painting the same thing. And I've never really done that. So it's kind of grabbing all the things I've learned over the years of technique or, or whatever I'm working on. And I'm just focusing on this one object on a table. And that's kind of creating a new brand new door for me of, of exploration where – someone might think you're just painting the same thing. It's going to get boring, but I've, I'm actually discovering a lot of new things because it's so hard to just paint. Okay. You're going to paint the same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, new doors open and new challenges happen by painting the same thing. And it, again, the cafetera has so much meaning to so many people, whether it's memories, nostalgia, or grandparents, the smell of coffee, a ritual in the morning. Yeah. Um, so, that's where I'm at now, and I, I've seen the change, and I've seen the the quote unquote maturity of um, the things I've I've been doing in my process and where it's leading to where it's currently headed. Mm -hmm. And something that's important for me when it comes to process, it's usually environment. Like, 
you work better in front of this desk or in this room right. or in that place. Or for me, I, I actually like switching environments relatively often because mm-hmm. I feel like that helps for, you know, different thoughts. It gets your mind in a different frame of mind. And, you know, is there anything like that for you? Do you have a dedicated space or do you constantly like to um, switch it up? Um, well, I have one studio, so I, I just work from there, but I, I love traveling. I, I do, you know, I go on a lot of road trips very, very often. Um, um, I'm trying to do more residencies where, you know, if you get accepted, you can, it, you know, work in a different part of the, you know, landscape, different type of landscapes where you can make work. So I, I definitely, it definitely adds on to, um, inspiration and, and new ex- any new experience can always kind of go back to the studio and will open new doors and make you self reflect if you're kind of out of your your space. But with painting, I sometimes it's a um, it's a, I kind of just use that one space, but I will step outside of it and just kind of um, um, experience stuff and then just bring it back. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the time frame they usually dedicate to different projects and pieces, has that grown or, or retracted over time? Like, are you able to, now that you're focusing more on single pieces at a time, has that like streamlined and made it quicker in a way for you to be able to produce work? Or do you feel that when you work on a few other things, you were able to, even though it took longer because you're tr- trickling it down, right. you still got more work done? Not to say that the amount actually has any value in that sense. It's just more about like your workflow and. and um, I definitely feel working this way. I it feels like I produce quicker. Um, because I remember back in the day, it would it would take me sometimes really long time to resolve stuff. Mm-hmm. Where now I kind of give myself like a time limit. Like if I can't finish this painting and, and that, you know, a week, two weeks, it's like already too much. Like I need to kind of move on to the next thing. Cause then, um, I usually mess up the work. You know, I feel like you overwork can sometimes mess it up. Uh, so yeah, I definitely feel like I, I work quicker in a way. Cause if, if I'm working on a piece and it's coming out how I like, then I start getting more ideas if I get, but back in the day, if I had more ideas, I just apply those more those newer ideas on top of the existing painting. Where now, if I have new ideas on an existing painting, I get excited and then I just try to resolve that to have those new ideas onto the next thing. So um, it's a little bit more, I guess, disciplined. Uh, work from experience. Uh, you don't have to get everything that you're thinking about on that canvas. You can resolve something. Not the best of your ability, you know, like you do what you can at that moment. That's a beautiful thing about painting. And then you move on. So I've definitely noticed that. Actually, the last cafetera painting I made had a cigar on it, has like some smoke, has a little um, espresso cup kind of hidden in the, in the background. Um, that one I kind of struggled with and I wanted to paint over a lot of parts and I kind of just like, all right, let me just like get this like where it needs to be. Cause if I keep working it, I'm going to make it a completely different painting. Yeah. So I got to that like breaking point and I was just like, I'm done. And then okay. I just backed up. And so now I'm starting something new. Cool. So, um, and in terms of recent projects, whether it be a particular piece or a residency, are there any that uh, really stand out to you as, I don't know, breakthrough work or something that you're really proud of? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think some, one of my friends, uh, uh, told me once that, uh, he, he was speaking about my work in particular, like it works together when you see the whole thing. So he says, like, if you see all my work that I've made over the years in one place, it like makes sense. Like, it's like, it needs to be all together. So I kind of feel like I'm usually happy when I see like a lot of my work together and I see how it's grown and, and where it's gone. And, um, but I'm also very happy with like my new work. I feel, 
I, I let I let go of certain um, stigmas I had about painting, uh, certain things like you know, as a creative person, sometimes you set your you know we don't have rules, so we set our own rules. And I felt like I had certain rules that of things I wouldn't do, and I feel like I broke some of them, and I feel like that's what needed to happen. And with that happening, I felt like I I feel that I had an almost like a new breakthrough, and I feel like. I definitely feel that breakthrough right now. Um, so I would say that's what I'm currently most proud of. Otherwise, I like seeing all the work yeah. together in a, way, in a way. And in your particular process, you you paint physically, right? There's no there, there there's is there any point where it becomes digital, or you strictly stick to? It's just uh, I just it's just paint. Yeah. I usually draw things out, I paint it, and then I draw on top of it, and then I paint it. Um, I've actually considered getting a projector. Uh, I don't know, like those where you can project maybe text and stuff onto the canvas and then kind of trace. Yeah. But I haven't gotten to that and I've never done anything like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's usually just, um, just very handheld, very primitive. Yeah. <laughs> so switching gears from the artistic side to a little bit more like the business side of your entrepreneurial path. Talking about Abuela Mami and, uh, you know, the, the growth that you've had over the past six years with the project, I guess, you know, give people a little bit of background on it and, and then we can kind of dive into where it's going. Um, yeah, I was I was uh, living up in like like uh, North Jersey area, North New Jersey area for, for five years and um, moved back to Miami around what, 2000. 15 or something like that and um my brother wanted to do like a subscription box service like that was like a business he wants to start he he has experience you know with uh with uh you know development and stuff like that and uh and we've done some e-commerce stuff in the past so he asked me what should we do it on and i was like i think maybe cuban you know cuban items since we're in miami and he was like yeah that's what i was thinking so he was i said what he was thinking and we decided to name it after my grandmother. And like we noticed just living in New Jersey, there's a big Cuban population, but uh, you can't find a lot of stuff. Like the guava is very difficult to find if you're like in the wrong, if you're in a different, you know, diff- some small town in Jersey or whatever. So we realized like Cubans are scattered everywhere. And what if we can do, just do like a little Cuban care package. Yep. We didn't think much of it. We just kind of did it. And it just kind of went viral from the beginning. And then... Um, and then we noticed that, like, when we would get press, we would get, like, even more subscription subscriptions. And then – but we noticed if there wasn't press happening, it would just kind of, like, slow down. So then that's when we started developing video and content. And that just kind of helped the the company grow. But still, it's, you know, it's very small. And uh, we knew it had a ceiling for it. So that's why we started – you know, that's why we decided to – come out with our coffee and also doing the box you know we ship all types of cuban american products that the majority of them are like located in hialeah believe it or not and uh one of the things that we discovered is because we you know we would ship coffee and we noticed like okay like it's great there's great like cuban style coffees but we realized we can really carve our own lane with like our own kind of cuban american organic just like a maybe a different different tasting coffee um, that was maybe more reminis- more reminiscent of how coffee tasted in Cuba when my grandparents grew up, which wasn't like like the coffee here. So, yeah, we just saw an opportunity and we decided to take it. Um, and I think the the the, the business is uh, kind of morphing into the coffee. Yeah. Um, it's definitely morphing. I think if people sign up now for the subscription box thinking it's going to be how it was four years ago, it's not. Um, right now we mostly just put baked goods and we just put our coffee. We don't put any name brands. We don't put, we don't put Goya anymore or anything like that or, or any of the other ones. It's just, it's more coffee focused now. Correct. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I definitely know that there was a demand back when I was working with Vicky Bakery. Yeah. I remember that one of the ideas that we had tossed around was the idea of sh- uh, getting people to vote. And so what part of the country they would like to see a Vicky Bakery open up, right? Oh, get yeah. an idea. Mm-hmm. And from there, you would kind of get like a map of where these congregations of people that really want this to happen. And then the idea would be, you know, we would 
overnight take them, you know, a care package of yeah. Nike specifically. And, and then that could kind of like help them, you know, grow their roots in that specific area. And just even dabbling in it, we saw that there was just nationwide kind of, yeah. you know, interest. So like this makes total sense because as people that, you know, might have grown up in Miami or Cubans that didn't even grow up in Miami but moved to another part of the country, you know, that nostalgic kind of desire for, you know, baked goods, for yeah. the products that they that they grew up with. I mean, you know, it was it was a lot of fun, you know, but as a creative person, you get to a certain point where uh, your kind of whole business is uh, relied on other people's products. And then that's why, like, we're so happy with our coffee because it's really our whole idea we yeah. we we can handle the the quality and 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 you know we have certain goals that we have as far as like a brand and i feel like when we incorporate other people's stuff like we we don't have that same control yeah um i think that that also probably had to shift your mindset in the sense of what started off as the idea of sharing you know a care package with other products shifted also to like how do we make this make financial and business sense right and so like you can't run a business on super low margins so right. it makes sense to do something that you are able to control and you're able to like have yeah. you know be able to financially operate yeah absolutely yeah. you know so we're it's you know you, we got into this not knowing what, what was going to happen uh it was just something that you know we needed to do because we needed you know we needed to make money um and just doors start opening and it's been it's been a blessing it's been incredible um it was a lot of hard work i did things that i didn't think i would do you know at a certain point not for nothing it's just you know i've always done art and that that type of thing and so you know going into these like warehouses and like meeting with people and then uh, you know moving a bunch of boxes and you know sorting through things and i never thought i would you know i just didn't think but i'm so appreciative of that because it makes me uh uh, know like what people go through every morning like people in vicky bakery they get up so early in the morning and they, they just make it happen so it, it made me much more appreciative and a lot more grounded and i don't feel like you know i'll never think i'm too good for anything you know especially you know being a painter sometimes you know our heads can be in the clouds and i feel like it kind of keeps me grounded and knowing that um uh, uh you know a lot of life is just about really hard hard work and and i I salute all everybody in, in in those industries down here or anywhere that uh, just get up at the crack of dawn and just make food, do whatever you know. And and um, it's been it's been a really 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 cool experience. And it's let me um, connect with my hometown in ways I never expected. I never thought I'd be hanging out with the owners of you know of uh, of Mateva and you know. Uh, Iron Man, uh, you know, uh, not Iron Man. I, you don't bet, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah. I never Iron Iron Man. Yeah. I never thought, like, you know, I never thought, you know, I would meet people from like La Cuanita, Guava. Like, I, my grandfather had that. My grandfather used to have a bodega, and they would sell that. I never thought I would be like be, become friends with you. You know, so it's 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 been amazing. You know, and I'm just so grateful. And then all the people that have ordered and they've gotten like emotional because it's like. It reminds them of their grandparents and and their family, and so uh, there's a lot of connection with it that I think has been really nice. Nice. Uh, there's a lot of lessons that are always learned. Are there? You know, you already mentioned a few of them, but are there any lessons that you really have learned from this tra- not transition, but this evolution of of your career to doing both art and you know running a business? Uh, yeah, I would say like it was something that was always told to me and I didn't listen. <laughs> um, I guess one of those things is um, sometimes you like work towards something and then you kind of like sit back and wait where I think um, you always have to kind of keep that motor running because when you constantly – when you're in constantly in motion, you're constantly planting the seeds and then they some will grow, a lot won't. So I think that constant motion, um, like I, you know, I have some meetings set up, you know, within the week that I don't necessarily think they're going to be like maybe extremely beneficial, but it's, it's just about keeping that 
movement going because if there's not much going on if you see little opportunities take them see what happens and just keep it moving or come up with your own thing to move on to the next thing and i would just say keep that motor running don't kind of do something and then just kind of wait yeah. just kind of constantly move you know we uh we we uh we were involved in the bitcoin conference we did all the coffee we, we gave out thousands and thousands of coffee it was it was crazy and right after the event, people were asking me, hey, did you see any type of like results from it? I'm like, I, I don't I can't sit around and wait like you you do something and then you move on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because if you sit around and wait, you'll get bitter because, oh, I didn't, I didn't get the re- you know response I thought I would. Or, you know, or if you get success from that, then you just kind of ride that wave and then you don't focus on planting more seeds. So uh, I think with every opportunity or opportunity you make for yourself is yeah just constantly keep moving keep making keep don't wait for anything yep yeah i think from my experience on the agency side we i've I've experienced that throughout my career in the sense of times when i've been more active in networking and reaching out and connecting with people versus times where i did less of that and then you kind of like look back at those subsequent six months and see how things like if there's more traction or less interest and yeah when you take your gas off the the foot off the pedal you definitely start seeing that over time you get less people reaching out less interest and it it does become like an issue so it's i think that's important to you know make sure that you are constantly pushing forward because if not you you find yourself in a situation where you're scrambling yeah when i when i was uh living up north you know i would I'd go to all the the art shows in New York City and stuff and just, you know, be seen. And, you know, one of the things people would say is like, you know, if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. So um, that is a big factor. And, uh, and you know, it gets hard with, you know, with the pandemic, you know, either people grow or they get bitter. And, you know, uh, you know, uh, I've seen people kind of shooting in different directions, like people just like working harder and then other people just kind of. I don't know, just mad, bitter, salty, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely an interesting time. I think that that right now, there's people don't really know how to react to the situation right. fully. So, you know, there's no like textbook way to respond to it. Yeah. But I think the rule of thumb is, you know, you have to find a way to yeah keep moving the ball. Forward. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen anything good come out of stagnation ever. So, yeah, uh, you just make stuff, you know, um, you know, and like. Uh, doing art, you know, sometimes you, you hit a patch where like, you don't have a studio, you don't have a space to make work, you know? And like, I I have some good friends that are like, Hey, I can't make work right now. Like I, I, I don't have a space. And I just encourage people like buy some watercolors, whatever, and get a little pad and just start making stuff. Stagnation does not work. Like you always have to like, especially if you're a creative person, you constantly have to make stuff it doesn't matter like you could take photos with your iphone like i I don't know but uh i just don't think there's any excuses to not make something you know there's times i'm not making big paintings or making this or making that but you're always gonna find me making stuff i'm always making stuff you know what i mean and i think like that's like that's the key you know and 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 um just sitting back it just doesn't work. You know, there's a time and place, you know, you need to relax. You need to sometimes like, uh, you know, recharge your batteries. I don't know, you know, how long someone recharges batteries. I actually read an article saying that, uh, you know, it's quote unquote, uh, the general population sometimes thinks creative people are lazy because they sleep a lot, but apparently, uh, artists tend to sleep more because we kind of work in a different way with our mind. So it's almost like it's supposed to be that way. I, I, they were talking about like actors and and people in theater and and, and visual artists that they tend to need more rest. Um, yeah, I mean it is it is different. It's most of the career day to day, whether you're an actor, an artist, a musician, um, they happen in different batches, and it's not like a nine to five where you're clocking and clocking out and doing like rudimentary actions. There's yeah. There's, you're like, you have to usually be doing something different than yeah. what you did before, even though there's some semblance. But uh, yeah, I think that that's why I, my schedule is always different than my friends in the sense like, 
I'll take a break in the middle of the day and then I'll keep working later on into the night and then I'll stay up late and wake up a little bit later in the yeah, morning yeah, the next yeah. day. But then, you know, and, and it's fine for me. Obviously, also your your family and, and your, your, your personal situation is indicative of that too. But I think in general, creative minds have a, a different way of, of kind of managing their time because, you know, the way that they are requested to produce work or the way that they produce work is, is just different than a, a yeah. nine to five. And, you know, I, like I said, like, with the subscription box or whatever, I know what it feels like to have like manual labor. <laughs> like I've had to move, move all types of stuff where with, um, with the painting that after like working really hard on a painting, the the being tired just feels different. I'm not saying you, you're more tired as a painter. I'm just saying the, more like a mental fatigue than it is more of a different. physical fatigue. Yeah, it's yeah. different. So I can't, I can't describe them. Um, yeah, so. I like to go back and, and always ask people what they would tell their younger self. I don't know if we want to say your 21-year-old self or your 15-year-old self, but, you know, the advice that you would give, you know, that version of yourself. Interesting. Because um, this is mainly to kind of, paint the picture for someone who's aspiring to be at least in your realm, whether, you know, it's starting a business or they're in, in the art world or maybe end up doing both. Like what's something that they could, you know, take away. Um, uh, hmm, that's a good one. I would say, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I would tell my younger self. Um, just to, you know, um, don't be too rigid on, you know, like I said, those rules of things you won't do. Be a little bit more open to things. Um, uh, don't ever underestimate anybody. Because um, there, there were times in my life where, uh, you know, I would underestimate certain situations. And then they ended up being a really good situation. And I wasn't a part of it because I underestimated it. So don't underestimate anyone or any situation that comes your way. Um, pride is a big one. Don't uh, get too prideful. Um, uh, be kind to people. I think for the most part, I've been kind, but sometimes I've been a little mean to people over the years, but, uh, just, um, just be kind to people, treat everyone how you want to be treated. Um, uh, don't be scared when success comes. Uh, I remember at a certain time when I was younger, a lot of things started happening and I just kind of, kind of, kind of turned me off. It kind of freaked me out and it made me kind of like go into my shell, you know, and it didn't let me kind of embrace, uh, oppor- like bigger and bigger opportunities. It made me, give me a little bit more anxiety. Uh, I would say just be open to new ideas, new opportunities. Um, you know, they say that success, like not everyone can handle success, you know, and, Certain times in your life, you're just not ready for things that will come your way. And I feel like there were certain times in my life where a lot of stuff was happening. And I just, I wouldn't say I self-sabotaged it, but I, I felt like I I just wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say just be very open, uh, be a little bit more trusting of people. Um, yeah. Um, when it comes to mentorship or guides in your life, a, what's your opinion of it? And B, did you have any? Um, I had some great teachers in school. Um, my friends were great, you know, uh, you know, great things to aspire to. Um, I've always, um, I've been one of those people that um, uh, I paint. I want to know everyone that paints, you know, that I, I respect. I will reach out. I will try to, like, create some type of dialogue uh, not always, but I, I, I know a vast amount of different artists um, and because uh, I want to know, you know, uh, I want to know who they are. I want to know what they're about. So I've always really been into just kind of knowing artists as far as like a mentor. Um, sometimes you, you don't pick your mentors. It just kind of happened where one time um, I kind of had a mentor that I always wanted, uh, which is a artist named Wayne White. Um, he used to do all the set design for Pee Wee's Playhouse. 
uh, yeah, later in, uh, he did a lot of set design, a lot of music video production stuff. He did stuff for Smashing Pumpkins, Peter Gabriel. You remember that uh, music video, Sledgehammer? Don't remember it actually. Uh, all the visual stuff was Wayne White, so he's he's legendary. But a little later in life, he got into painting, right. and now you know he's you know he's a very successful painter artist, uh, and. He had an exhibition, and I kind of was promoting on my social. And the director of uh, of that show, uh, a lady named, a wonderful lady named Jane Hart, reached out to me, and she told me that Wayne White wanted me to come in and help. So I came in. I spent a week with him every day. Had lunch with him and his wife, dinner, and I got to spend time with him. So although it was only about a week, and I was you know painting walls, doing whatever they needed to do for the show. Um, I felt like it was like I had him as a mentor for a week, yeah. someone that I really respect um, to that level. I've never had that. So um, I would say that was like a, a certain situation where I was able to learn in a short amount of time and just be very appreciative. And, and again, like kind of just doing whatever they, he wanted me to do, you know. Um, so that was a, an amazing experience. Like I, I didn't know something like that was even possible and it just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my experience, I've never really had, like, an official mentor, but there are definitely certain uh, professionals in my career or certain people that I've met and yeah. friends that, you know, I've gotten guidance from, I've gotten feedback and, and input from that. But, I, again, like, I didn't have uh, someone that was my go-to mentor. Right, right. And so it's I think it's always interesting. Also, I'm the first in my family to – in terms of my immediate family to start a business to be entrepreneurial so it's not like i could go to my mom or dad yeah, and, right, and be right. there and like hey how do you do this part of it it's you know figure it out on your own and, and find other people that you know might have um, some more insight to, to provide but i think that that's a challenge for a lot of creatives figuring out you know what's their path and how you know do you go to someone above like for me and my business partner at the agency we're both the same age you know he has experience in bigger agency world that have more experience i can the freelance and digital space and it's not like we have someone above us that's necessarily right right to like like what he would say is elevate you know raise the ceiling so it's just a challenge at times but that's why i'm always interested to find out like how yeah absolutely now that i think of it i have a a, a actually more mentors than that that i would describe as a mentor just because if they're older and they have more experience like um a a great artist in vermont uh, richard jacobs has been very supportive and he always kind of lent you know, always shares very like knowledgeable information and he's kind of dabbled in, you know, he's a, he's a prolific painter, but he also, he's also had businesses and stuff. So he kind of shares with me information that I maybe, maybe didn't think of. Uh, he's been wonderful. And, um, also if he sees that I'm like good at something, uh, you know, at times he will like, Hey, go to the art store. You'll have, you have materials there. It's already paid for. So I had, you know what I mean? Like he's been an incredible, incredible mentor and and supporter and I, i'm a supporter of him i love his work richard jacobs check him out uh if you're on instagram richard jacobs richard jacobs an amazing artist uh another one uh is a local artist uh george sanchez Calderon. he's like an old school guy um uh cuban american great artist very conceptual deals with a lot of different concepts and uh he's been very inspiring because you know He's older than me, and he kind of tells me things he's been through and uh, makes me think of, you know, he doesn't tell me don't do this, don't do that. But he would just kind of say his experience, and yeah. it kind of lets me know, okay, I'm not going to do that. I will do this. I won't do that. And um, we kind of feed off of each other, And but he's definitely uh, someone I, I, I respect. Has there, has there been anyone that's giving you terrible advice that you realize later on was, like, not the best or that, you know, you considered it, and then you're like, I'm glad I didn't go that way? Um, interesting. Um, no, not really. Um, no, not, not really. I, cause I, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I have a lot of discernment with things. So if someone gives me advice and if I do it, I, I will almost kind of blame myself mm-hmm. because I should kind of decipher like, okay, you know, I have to have a feel for something before I make a, like a decision. So if I just make a decision off of what someone says, I mean, I should use a little bit more, um, my own better judgment. Yep, totally get that. Um, is there anything in this industry? I guess we it could go either way. It could be in the art world, 
or it could be, you know, in, in the business world with Abuela Mami, uh, that excites you, that you really, you know, are looking forward to because, you know, it's a new opportunity that hasn't been explored. Um, I, I, I just love image making. I love images. I love looking at paintings. I love, I love, I just love images. I mean, there's just something about it. Um, so whenever I, I'm, I'm, uh, when it, it's gotten to the point where like you, you constantly visualize, you know, things you want to be around and then it just starts happening on autopilot. So I feel like I'm always around, uh, kind of cool things to look at. So, um, I just love art in general. Um, all art, you know, I, I enjoy it as long as it's not like, you know, um, uh, uh I feel like it's disturbing. I don't care much for disturbing art, but if it gives me a good feeling, exciting, kind of fun, I love it. I, I love it. Even if it's deep and, you know, it's, it's, it's harsh realities, that's fine. Um, I don't care for shock value, but I love to, I love art. It always, it always gets me excited, especially if other people are excited about it. it it's always gives me a good feeling. Um, coffee. I mean, what's not to love about coffee and, and being able to share? You know, I, I, I've always been able to share my paintings and people could look at it and then walk along where with the coffee, it's something people taste and, and can have and enjoy. And they can have it with, you know, with a pastelito or a, a pound cake or whatever. That that gives me a different different joy. And and, and I love the visual aspects of, of our brand and and and, uh, and just being able to share that is, is is cool. I mean, I, I just, all of it's kind of fun. Obviously, some of it gets a little annoying yeah. sometimes, you know, things you got to deal with. But, um, you know, I don't know if I'm being too dreamy, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fun, you know, and, and, uh, yeah. Um, and as we try and wrap it up here, what I usually like getting into is the recommendations. Anything you've been reading or watching recently that you, highly recommend to creative oh man um that's a good one what create something creative for people to see that's hard i don't know uh i mean for me i always it, a lot of people have watched it by now but like abstract the art of design is something that you know i'll watch and rewatch on netflix because you know it goes into different creatives and different artists and shows their entire you know background and how they think about things and um, I would say, I mean, for me, I would just say drive around and just look. I mean, that's that's like kind of my enjoyment. I, I just I just like driving around, looking at like the funky architecture, like on A Street, like some of those motels, or or you know, um, I, I get I get kind of inspired just by being very observant in a way. So I, you know, I, I don't know if that's not like a lame answer, but I just just like always looking at i don't really i don't would i wouldn't really recommend like a, a show or or a documentary uh i think just going outside going go out and just look and i think when you always as long as you go out and look i think you will find art it just won't be what it's com what's conventional art just um people make art not and sometimes not intentionally you know and the way they throw out their garbage or the way they paint their house or, or the lack thereof. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just like little things like that. Yeah. You already mentioned some artists that you recommend people check into. Are there any other artists that you would also, you know, advise people to, to check out? Yeah, to check out. Oh, uh, so many, uh, man. Uh, that's a good, there's so many, uh, Maybe the last person you saw on your feed <laughs> that you... Well, I, I've been talking a lot more now. I've known him for many years, but uh, Miami guy, A-hole, uh, we kind of gotten reacquainted recently. I've known him for many years, so we've been very supportive of each other, and I think we're going to have lunch to, on Friday yeah. with some friends from out of town. So check out A-hole, see what he's doing. Uh, with that said, even Atomic, I, I love you know the graffiti guys, so Atomic, and those are two guys I've known for a really long time, so... I always will give them a shout out uh, so people can discover. And then uh, as far as painters, um, man, there's so many. I don't know. My, my mind draws a blank with stuff like that. Yeah. You know? No, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, 
pretty much wraps it up. I don't know if you know you want to tell people where they can follow you or follow the brand uh, so they can stay in touch. Yeah, I mean, um, you can check out our coffee at uh, awelamamicoffee.com. Not Awela Miami. It's Awela Mami. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> awelamamicoffee.com. We ship to you know all the states in the U.S. Um, uh, my my website's currently down, but you can check out my Instagram, and I'm usually posting my current stuff, which is just Kiki Valdez. If you want to email me, everything is Kiki Valdez, K I K I V A L D E S at Gmail. Uh, you just always search my name. That's that would be my email. It's just my name, no underscore, no nothing, just my name. Cool. Alrighty, man. Thank Thanks, you so man. much. Thank I appreciate, you. appreciate it, bro. Sweet. Thank you.